Good day, guys. Had a lot of people who want me to pull this, this apart, see what's in it. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to pull it apart. We'll lift that up a bit. I'm sitting on the floor at the moment because there's too much detectors on the workbench. I've run out of space. I'm just doing a soak test on a detector at the moment. So we'll pull this thing apart. I was take out the screws. Oh dear me. How'd they get that one in there? That's gonna be a fake screw, does it? Do you know? No? Yeah, oh. I need a small, a very small screwdriver to get this one out behind this. Maybe it's a trick so you don't get it apart. That's too small. Oh, where are you? That'll be too pointy. Uh, that'll probably be perfect. Nope. What a crazy way to put a screw in like that. I mean, actually, better off using a little flat blade to get that one out. Thought so. Even though it's a Phillips head. Um, screw but uh, these are very small screws so you can just use a uh, flatty and uh, it'll get them out pretty quick there's a couple of them I pulled out that are stripped already <laughs> that they've uh, given it a bit of a yeah you can see here just undo it it's got see the blue on the end it's just They've been over tightened to start with, and it's uh, just basically ripped the plastic out. So, probably put in with an air driver or electric screwdriver with too much torque, too much twist on it, and it has gone in and stripped the plastic. These things are just coming out so easy, like the plastic's damaged, I'd say. So in the background there, I've got a 45 going. I've got the uh, preamp turned up full. And that is, that's what I mean about the 45. It It is quiet. There's a, a little bit of inter interference coming through, I can hear. But let's separate. Oh, here we go. Wow. Oh. Um, that fell out of it. That was a hot melt glue rattling around. Oh dear me. Uh, <laughs> okay. This thing at the far end here. Oh dear me. The thing with the knob. I have a little shifter in here that I can undo that, but I don't know where it is. Uh, the board slides in. Oh, here we go. The bit's hanging all over it. Make sure nothing pulls. Oh, God. Okay. The hot melt glue is falling off the board. But uh, that's what's in, in this. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, wait till I flip it around. This will be uh, a, a worth a chuckle, I think. <laughs> oh, where's my batteries? Oh, it's stuck on the back of the board, of course. Yeah. Well, that's what's in this thing. Uh, yeah. 250... Sorry, 2,000, 2,500 milliamp hour. 11.1 volts DC. So, yeah, the battery stuck on with a bit of foam, double-sided foam. And, uh, yeah, the whole thing's all put together with hot melt glue. Don't know if you can see that, but everything uh, in there is just big squirts of hot melt glue over it. Oh, God. Oh, I'm not joking. Come on. No, no, no. There is a speaker. 
and it's glued. Oh, this is funny. There's a speaker. It's glued to the side of the case in there, covered in hot melt glue. I don't know if you could see it. That, that white thing there, all that hot melt glue, it's got a speaker there. There's no speaker hole there. God, how's that work? Oh dear, plastic resonance. I don't know. <laughs> oh, sugar. And a uh, little hang. And uh, yeah, there's that part of it. Jeez, a lot of wiring and stuff in there. Yeah. Oh. Here we go. I'm not joking what it says on there. It's an MC, MCD 7000. Uh, 25th of the 6th of 2021. That's interesting. It's been hiding away for a while then. So I'll tell you what though. Yep, same date. Um, it's neatly laid out, part-wise. That's quite neat. I'm just trying to see if I can see anything of very, of anything that's, of, you know, real interest. It's all... Obviously, very small um, components. It, if it's anything, it would the biggest component there, power wise, is probably these transistors or FETs or whatever they are. Um, possibly that might be the coil driver. It's very good for 50 milliamps. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm not very impressed. You've had a, you've had a look, and I'm going to stick it back together. But it's actually very, very similar with the guides and everything. How a 7000 is put together. But, I mean, a 7000. I mean, you know, the 7000 7, boards look like that. You know, you've got a microprocessor. Uh, you know, you have a good look at that. And I've also got the... Uh, the other board, the uh, dual board, which is there, this one's missing the module. That's the one that uh, I'm working on, going to work out uh, how to replace the module or rebuild rebuild a module for it. So there is our, yeah, hollow box. Um, yeah. Anyway, not impressed. <laughs> I'll put all that back together. Okay, the other one we've got here. Um, I might as well have a look at that as well. What do you think? I might as well have a look inside this thing because this is going to be an absolute classic. I should have, I should have done it. People wanted me to do it. So we'll pull this thing apart. And we'll just it's got loose things in it as well. Okay. <laughs> Live and learn. Let's make sure this um microphone's still working. Uh it didn't charge properly. Now I'll get the right this this is uh again Phillips head stars, we're gonna call them. Um so we'll get in there. I don't want to use the electric uh, driver on these tiny little screws that hold it together. But we'll pull it apart and you know this could this could be a bit of a laugh as well. I'm so, I'm just seeing so much serious uh, detectors over a long period of time and. Uh, that detector's drifted onto the mains frequency. If you can hear that. Even though these uh, detectors 
um, don't move much in the short term, otherwise they'd make a horrible racket when you went detecting. In the long term, they drift. It's just because uh, they utilize a LC oscillator for generating um, their transmit and receive timings and so forth. And as the temperature changes, so does the frequency. So if it's a stable 50 hertz, what there is 50 hertz or harmonics of, it'll start beating with it um, as the detector drifts slowly. So it's, it's just LC oscillators. That's all it is. If it was uh, crystal controlled or something in that part of the circuitry, um, it would probably uh, not drift. But what they've done is that they've used LC oscillators to control the phase noise. That is what they've done, uh, in my humble opinion. Ah, dear me, here we go. Well, have, have a look at this. Um, there you are, there's your display driver. And it's done on a, two sets of boards there. It's got some four-legged, four I don't know, are they op-amps? Probably. There for some reason. It does have rotary encoders. Uh, I'd say the same, looking at this, the same guy who designed uh, the other one designed this one. And, okay, I'll undo, undo this side and we'll see if we can get it apart. Because it does, it does look interesting. Actually, when you have these small um, Phillips screws, a flat blade works better to get them out. The other one wants to ride up, and you know they they just don't fit properly. So this this thing bites in really good and just just undoes them so quick. It's all in the wrist action, just bang bang, off she comes. There you go. That's stripped. It's a fifth screw, and this is the sixth screw. That was all pretty quick, wasn't it? I must have undone millions of these. Pop those out. Don't drop the screws. Put that in there, like so. Push the wires in so they don't catch on the uh, screw mounts on the side. And let's let's remove it. Uh, dear me, it's a bit squeezy there. Why is that? Oh. They have made it squeezy. Maybe you meant to take that subboard off. No, we'll get it out. Ah, uh, see what that's doing. Come on, just get past that. Would you believe it's about a quarter of a millimeter? Um, that's catching by. So then I'm going to push that up, push that down. Now it's catching on the other side. Oh, is it? It's a trick for new players. Okay. Once it come up and oh that just glued on or something. My god, I, I can pull the display board off with my fingers. Now I don't want to do that. I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull the backboard off because it uh, has some connectors. So that'll <laughs> yeah, okay. There, there's that. That fell off. Beautiful. And uh, now I can put this through, we can have a good look at it. So you can have a look at uh, one of these things. <laughs> oh, dear me. Okay, let's let's have a good look. Let's compare it to a the real thing it's meant to look like. First of all, no shielding whatsoever. Uh, it's used. Copy C and K switches. And as you can see, they've all been massively glued over on the connections. Probably stopped the wires falling off. And uh, yeah, there's this. What the hell have they got there? That's the back of it. And that's that three pin thing there. I don't know if it gets a light on that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's like a B barrel. 
Well, not that big, but it's a lot bigger than the other one, and uh, it really sticks out. Uh, let's have a look at this. 2019, 26th of the 9th, 2019. That's weird. Have a look at this. There's a pot. Is that a trim pot? It's glued on the board. I don't know what that does. Obviously, uh, something needs a bit of a trim when they're manufactured. It, it, you can't access it from uh, outside anything. But I'm just looking at that board. That board looks... Is that the same board in this one? Hang on a second. Oh, no, it's the same board. Yeah, I'm going to wiggle this thing out again. Oh, God. Have a look. Oh, it's a little bit different, but not much. Let's go have a look at it. Okay. Now I know what the... See the blue trim pots on this one here? There. Oh, they've only got one trim pot there, and they, they must have run out and stuck it on the board. I mean, that's bizarre. It really is bizarre. But it's the same board. It's absolutely identical. Uh, so, one board fits all. <laughs> yeah, you should be able to see that. It's exactly the same board. It's no difference. So your um, the thing that looks like that is a low power VLF detector, and that is a low power VLF detector as well. Yeah, and having a, having a good look at this and this. Hard to get in the light. But yeah, um, it's a very simple overall design. And uh, God bless them, they left the part numbers on this one. I don't think the part numbers are on this one, but the part numbers are on this one. They haven't uh, given them a haircut and shaved them off. This one's got no part numbers. But the same board here has. So what I'll do, <laughs> I'll write down all the part numbers and make it a... Um, a, a document shows what parts are what on these. If you, if you need to replace chips, I don't know why you would. That is, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to know what these were selling for, but you know, I've seen more componentry uh, in something that uh, sells at. Uh, oh, you, can, you, you know these detectors you see pop up on emails, uh, email you, all this electronic stuff? Could be a Timu, or AliExpress, or any of those, you know, buy out stuff, um, sites. Uh, yeah, but I've seen, I've seen more componentry in uh, a detector. It sells for about 70 bucks. So that's... Uh, this bizzo. So it's so simple. Why'd these both stop working? Now, maybe I should fix them. Maybe I should. But, you know, it's like working on. I don't know. It's like, to me, it's like trying to revive a dead body or something. It's just, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it. I really don't. So I'll leave them. I'll, I'll have a go at trying to fix them up and see if I can make them work. Um, yeah, but uh, well, that's the backboard there. There you go. And uh, yeah, this has a crystal oscillator on it in the processor. Obviously, that's the display driver and so forth. And uh, that just clips on the back there with some. Uh, Pins there, pins there, 
click, she's on. But what, what I don't like, I don't know if you, oh God. You know, don't, don't tell me. Oh God, they haven't even done the nuts up. The whole board's flexing. Look at that. I just ah, spit off my fingers. Oh, God. I you know, oh, don't want the nuts to fall off. God. Uh, yeah, I, I, the whole board's going like this. So the the uh, display is coming away from the um, housing. Um, well, if you can see at the top there, uh, probably here, uh, there's meant to be screws here. And there's recesses in the plastic for the screws, but we don't use screws. Um, no need for screws. We'll just have it hang there by the loose, the loose nuts on the rotary encoder. You know, Jesus. <laughs> but they are, they are actually rotary encoders, so that part of it's not good. So we'll tighten those up a little bit. Oh, it's not wobbling now, but I mean. Yeah, four screws are meant to go in, and there's no screws have gone in. So it all just hangs there. So. Wow. Yep. They've uh, done a proper um, machine soldering of all the ICs and the surface mount resistors and capacitors and the rest of it is all hand soldered you can tell because they've uh, poked it through and uh, cut it off with snips so yeah that's that um i should have a trip on to um ali 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 express or wherever and see what these sell for so oh, that's what you're getting in it you know it's a it's a VLF. It's just a um, you know Mickey Mouse toy. I'm just trying to have a look at what does what. Let me have a look where things go into the coil. I, I'm I'm getting a little bit intrigued now, but I've seen these before these boards, and I think every time I've seen them, they've ended up in the bin. Okay, this is our transmit and receive. Connector here. And there, oh, okay. It's got a couple, it's got a, uh, looks like a P and an N surface mount. Little SOT uh, 232 transistors, I think they are in there, which would uh, be good for, I don't know, 25 milliamps or something. That probably generates a sine wave. And uh, yeah. I'd have to get right in there and check out all the ICs, but you know, they're yeah, capacitively coupled into the receive. Uh, yeah, pretty basic stuff, isn't it, really? But that's it. A big blue box with that in it, and another big blue box with that in it. So they're both exactly the same. So that tells you they just use the same boards and just put different housings around it and uh, um, call it whatever they call it. And uh, yeah, poor mug punters think it's uh, a lot better detector than what it probably is and uh, fork out way too much money for what they end up with. And they probably just end up with a headache. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, just make a proper detector. I mean, and you know, like I say, screws in the coils, fantastic. Um, that's that's a that's a that's the best one ever. I've seen screws in the coils. I'm not going to go pull the coil apart because, like I said, um, you know, I can only take so much laughter in one day, and uh, oh, I'm at my end. <laughs> oh dear me! Oh dear me! I never worked out what the cat, what the um, the digital photo frame button on the other one does it hasn't got a camera in it at all so i don't know what it does very strange but that's where we are anyway um yeah that's a um up there on the bench at the moment is an early model 
4500 and I have replaced the whole input stage on that, done some other adjustments. It's got variable frequency. I haven't put a variable gain board in there. I've just basically set it so you can get the maximum out by using the back end gain, which is um, that 0 to 15 thing that's uh, in there. And uh, yeah, it's sitting there dead quiet, quiet as a mouse. So running really nice. The, the 5000s and the later boards, they're still choppy. They're still choppy. They will not behave like that, even though that's, um, that is, it's got a gain of 48 at the moment, and it's just mousy. And the other ones with their gains of uh, 34 are choppy and noisy. Like I say, that was my post about, you know, um, that it's being, it's being illogical because it, it should be the other way around. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be, uh, unless it, you know, I'm starting to think that there's, in my other post, you know, Houston, we have a problem. I think uh, there is a problem. And I think, in my humble opinion, that uh, maybe there's been a component change. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, NQR. It's really strange to have that in all that type of detector with those extra components on the uh, front there that supply a little bit of higher voltage. But uh, it's so noisy. It's really, really strange. Yeah. So we've had, dra um, we've had a drama with a repair and a mod uh, today. I basically, it came in. It, came, it, it, went to, it went to a mine lab dealer and it had the uh, um, damping FET replaced the MOSFET, the uh, IRF, um, whatever it is. Um, what is it? IRF 9634 or something, whatever it is. It's a, it's a um, P-channel um, MOSFET, IRF 9630, that's what it is. And uh, yeah, they replaced that and it blew that same MOSFET up again. And I ended up with that detector and they said, oh, well, you know, it went to some dealer. I won't mention. They uh, repaired it and it failed again rather quickly. Um, so they brought it here or sent it here. And they said, look, you know, if you fix it, can you put the mods in? So I said, sure, sure, I'll put the mods in. Um, you know, Dave, Dave worked out with them what they wanted and uh, came in. And all I found was the IRF, yeah, 9630, nine, whatever it is, um, shorted and, you know, popped it out, put a, a higher rated one in there. The, um, the original transistor is only rated for 200 volts. I put a higher rated one in there. It's actually rated for about eight amps at, uh, 240 volts so it gives a bit of headroom and um tested it for about an hour fine looked around couldn't see anything else upgraded it put some nice um you know low noise modules in the uh front end um put in variable frequency tested it fine and uh anyway today i get contacted that um it had failed. It had failed. And uh, there was no depth or partial depth or something going on and a lot of bucket of noise. So I'm suspecting that uh, it um, blew up the uh, uh, MOSFET again. But yeah, anyway, it ended up being a bit of a drama. And uh, in this game, you have to deal with dramas. So I'm going to have to dig a little bit deeper why it takes that MOSFET out. It sounds very strange. Unless there's something like the uh, reservoir capacitor is no longer there. It's just um, an empty shell and all the electrical uh, lights leaked out and it's got no capacitance. Or could what else could it be? Um, a dry joint somewhere on the um, transmit part of the coil uh, wiring or something. Something there I've had it before and I and I didn't check it. I should have checked it. That under the heat shrink, 
on the coil connectors, the heat shrink holds the wire beautifully, right? But sometimes, I've had it in the past, a lot of them have been dry joints. They just haven't put enough heat. And they put the wire in there, and it, it moves. And if that goes, you know, make, break, make, break, make, break, it just sometimes can take out that MOSFET, or it actually blows up the whole front end. It takes out the uh, 2SK1334s, and, uh, and then it takes out that driver transistor. And, uh, you know, if things go pear-shaped, it takes out the, um, the other isolation MOSFETs before it goes into the uh, op amps. It burns an op amp, BAV 99s, burns them out. Uh, in worst case scenario, it can actually burn out the ADG 333 because that's where the drive, it goes back down the, the gate drive and into that and takes that out. So it can end up as a big repair. So I don't know what's going on there with this detector, but uh, it is getting sent back. And uh, yeah, we'll um, have a look to what is going on. Very strange. Um, I hate I hate faults like that because you you go okay that's died we'll put a better one in there everything else checks okay and then it'll blow up later on and uh, yeah you know it's it's the same it's it's like the old story you know you um you know you take your car to the uh, automatic transmission place they uh, service your automatic transmission. A week later, you're driving down the road and your engine blows up, but it was a transmission place's fault. <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes. You know, it's my fault. I touched that, but that caused that to blow up. It's got nothing to do with it. But yeah, that's that's um, the electronics game. It's it's uh, all tagged, and uh, you know, it, people look at it as a box. You know, the you worked on the box, the box died, so you didn't do it right. But they don't understand. It's full of different components, different things all over the place, you know, 500 different parts. And, uh, you know, you've got you to know what every one of them's doing, you know. And if it's intermittent, it's a real problem. So people out there who want their detectors repaired, you have to um, understand that uh, with these funny faults where things have blown up twice in a row and it's been the same thing, there might be something intermittent causing it. And, yeah, you know, sometimes we, we can't see it. It doesn't do it in front of us. You, you can't fix what is not with the other F word, if you know what I mean. If it's not doing what the problem is in front of you, how do you know what the problem is? You can't decipher that uh, until it does it again. And then you go, well, it's done twice in a row. It must be something else. And then you've got to go digging and try and find it and try and replicate it by, you know, you know, probably heating, cooling, moving parts on the circuit board, ripping off all that heat shrink, redoing the uh, connectors. So it ends up becoming a time-consuming job when you fix, you think you fixed it the first place when it was obvious. And, uh, you know, it's uh, something else, you know. It's like, um, I don't know, it's like having a heart attack and getting re um, resuscitated and then they tell you your kidneys are failing. <laughs> sort of thing. I don't know. You know, it's, it's the surgeon's fault who, you know, did the bypass and wrecked your kidneys. I don't know. Same thing. So that that's the, the vagaries of fixing detectors. Um, but, yeah, you know, we do that, so you got to wear it. It's like that, uh, there's a fellow on YouTube in the, in the US. Uh, what's he called? South, South something or other. Not South Park. Um, South. Southside repairs or something. He does all his repairs um, with a video going, and he talks through the repairs, and it's quite interesting to watch. Sometimes some of it's quite funny, uh, very funny indeed. And I, I do know why he videos all his repairs, because uh, if you if you watch it, you'll know. I'm not going to say why, but he videos all the repairs because, well, I will say why. In, this is in the US, of course. Uh, he'll get something in and he'll put it on his bench and he'll video it as he's working on it. And, you know, you can see exactly what he's working on. He fixes it. He'll put it back together. And the customer, this is what actually happened on one of them. The customer said, oh, oh, that had two hard drives in it. Where's the other hard drive? But it only had one. And they try it on, trying to get an extra hard drive, stuff like this, right? <laughs> or um, 
it comes in and it's uh, you know it's like a laptop and it's actually the screen is broken and it you know it's got it's shattered or broken or whatever and he he, opens it, he tells him he goes oh look you know it's, un, it's unfixed it's going to cost a fortune it needs a new screen no nope, the screen wasn't broken when we uh, sent it to you this sort of stuff but that's why he videos it because he says yes it was you know it just cuts the argument so yeah maybe that's what I should do video all the repairs no it's pointless um, but yeah we, we test test them first to make sure that they are working all right and that but intermittent faults um, they get by you. you you can't you can't fix what's not broken there and then in front of you so that's the story of that so with these other VLF things I'm going to I'll pack this one here up. I've still got another couple I've got to do. I've got a couple of rush jobs for people. I don't like rush jobs, but, uh, you know, they want to go out detecting with their mates and uh, they want the, you know, the newest and the best and, yeah, rush, rush. So, yeah, a bit of insight onto these anyway, guys. Um, you know, in my personal opinion, um, stay clear. Um, unless you just want a... I don't know what you even use it for. Beach detector, maybe dry sand detector. It won't work in wet. Um, and trying to work this stuff on the Australian gold fields with with our super mineralized soil is fraught with danger. And I don't think you will be successful with these type of detectors. Uh, even Garrett's found out in the early days. Charles Garrett didn't believe that his detectors would not work on the Australian gold fields. So he flew over here with his detectors, A2Bs and all the rest, and he went, oh, they don't work. <laughs> they don't ground balance. So, yeah, there was a, um, a fix it on those. So, yeah, that was, that was a long time ago. But, you know, these things happen. Uh, if you don't test it, you don't know. So these detectors, who's tested who? Who has tested these on Australian gold fields? You know, I, I doubt it very, very much. I might be wrong, but I doubt it. Don't know. Don't think so. But I'll because I've had them in the past. I've had a uh, um, a port. It was actually called a GPX forty five hundred, and it had the same board. I think it's still in the garage. Uh, the guy didn't want it back, so it's in the garage in the box of crudoodle in the garage. And I just remember it wouldn't ground balance. There's no way known I could make it ground balance. It would mildly um, ground balance on very mild soil, like you'd probably find in China. But uh, the ground here, it just would not settle. And you had to hold it five inches off the ground so it would actually work. So uh, not a good detector for gold fields. But yeah, same board, actually. So yeah. That's how it goes. Anyway, enough of the video. I'm sick of sitting on the floor. I've got to go and do some more work. And what is it? Quarter to nine. Catch us. <laughs>